The series we started last week, Brokenness, the beginning on the road to renewal, it was, oh, I don't know, somewhat painful, I guess. It was kind of like one of those spiritual kick in the groin, if you will, for those of you males, and a bop to the forehead. It just, it was, it was, it was difficult. I realized that. I was here. But it's necessary nonetheless. And I wanted to let you know that this series, I, I'm not preaching through this book, but this little book, um, it, it captures the essence of what we're talking about. This is a book written, it actually wasn't written as a book, it's a collection of messages that was delivered in 1947 by Roy Hessen. It's a little book called Calvary Road. We've ordered a uh, hundred or so of these. Um, it's about uh, the road to revival, Calvary Road. It's about brokenness, and it's an excellent book. I, I tell a lot of people this, that I give this book to. Um, other than the Bible, this is the most influential book I've ever read in my life. And I've read more than five, so that would at least, uh, that, does, that does say something. It is the most influential book other than the Bible that I've ever read. And I don't, I don't say that flippantly. Or, or lightly. It is, it's a, and it's also one of the shortest books I've ever read, which is a plus. And the print is large, which is another plus. There's no pictures, guys, so I can't help you out in, in, in that degree. But w again, the sermon is not based upon the, the chapters, but it, 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 it does, does follow the same theme. So I want to want to recommend that to you. We ordered a hundred or so of those, so they're available for you. I think they're approximately $5. If that's, uh, if that's something you cannot afford, you can, you can take one and we will make those available. Last week, here's where we, uh, we ended. We ended with this verse. John chapter 15, verses 1 and 2. I'm the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. And every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, it is our desire that we rise to a temperature above uh, lukewarmness. We desire, Father, for you to pour out your Spirit upon us, that you might heat us up in a spiritual sense, that we might bear more fruit, that we might bear much fruit, that we might have full joy, that we might experience, Lord, all that you have desired and desire for us to experience. Lord, you sent your son to die on the cross, Lord, to atone for our sins and to give us his gift of righteousness. And, Father, also to sanctify us by faith. So we pray, Father, for our own sanctification this morning, that you not leave us where we are, but that you transform us by the renewing of our minds, that your spirit, Father, would work powerfully in us, that your word would be proclaimed this morning in power, and, Father, that you would use that word and find uh, fertile soil in our hearts to bear fruit. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Evidently, for us to rise above mediocrity, to rise above a temperature of lukewarmness, for us to bear much fruit, and not just seasonal fruit occasionally when the circumstances are really, really good, but rather to bear fruit all the time, to be and experience full joy, that requires, according to our Lord Jesus Christ, that we submit ourselves to the Father and allow Him to prune us. Everything was great until we got to verse 2. That he would prune us that it may bear more fruit. You see, the vine has to be prepped if it's actually going to be fruitful. And, and, uh, and by the vine, I'm not speaking of Christ. I'm speaking about the branches connected to the vine that is his body, his church. We have to be subjected to the process of pruning, which is sanctification. We are justified in Christ. We become part of the vine by virtue of grace that we receive through faith. It's not of works. There's nothing that we do except simply trust. And that's a, that's a reality. It's a declaration. It's an event. It happened in the past. But the growth process, 
the renewal process is, is not an event, it's a process. It takes time, and there's pain involved, and there's joy involved, and there's growth involved, and there's pruning involved. And that preparation process, Jesus refers to as pruning. Now, here's the deal. We know, you and I, we know this intellectually. This is something that we have in our heads, and we can identify that verse, and we can say, yes, that's true. I know that's true experientially. And I know it's necessary. We know it's good. We know that it's a good thing to be pruned. We know that it's a good thing to be stretched and have our faith uh, stretched so that we bear more fruit. We all know this is good. This is all up here. Nobody here intellectually is disagreeing with Jesus, I hope. But nonetheless, we shrink back from pruning. It's like, it's like a kid. You can hear these kids are kind of squirming and... I don't like, he's loud. In fact, last week, one of the, uh, somebody told me that they were sitting in the back and this little girl was laying her head on, on her, on her uh, mother's lap and, and the little girl in the middle of the sermon looked up with this, just kind of this annoyed look on her face and said, Mommy, why is that man screaming? <laughs> I don't know what she said, but uh, it's cute nonetheless, but... Little kids, they're impatient, they're intolerant, they don't like to be pushed, they don't like pain. We don't like it either. It's kind of like a kid with a splinter. How many of you moms and dads have removed a splinter from your toddler's finger or feet? Okay, if you have kids, uh, you've, you've experienced this. The pruning and the splinter removal process are one and the same. They're very, very similar. It's the, the child is, is, is simultaneously... Uh, miserable about the splinter being in its foot and desperately wants the splinter to be out of its foot. But the moment you, mommy, comes, let mommy see the foot. Ah! It's just, it's, it's kind of like gravity. For, for gravity, um, let's see if I can get this right. It's been a while since I taught physics. But the, the force of gravity is directly proportional to the product of the two, the, the masses of, of, the, of, of the body the two bodies, whether it be the earth and the moon or you and the earth and you standing on the earth. And it's inversely proportional to the square root of the distance between the two bodies. So that means the further and further away you get from these two bodies, the, the less the force of gravity. So there's this, this, this supernatural force involved with the kid and the splinter. The pain of the splinter increases directly proportional to the square root of the distance as you approach the child's foot. If you can't see the splinter, it doesn't hurt as bad. But if mommy wants to see it, let mommy see it. And as soon as you get closer, the pain is magnified exponentially. You follow that? It's very similar in a spiritual sense. We know that we have to be pruned. We know this. We know that our, our flesh, that where sin indwells, it needs to be pruned and it needs to be put to death. Hence, why, that's why Paul says, put to death whatever dwells among you, dwells in you, the sin. Put it to death. Put it to death. You hear that over and over again. So the pruning process is the clipping off of that which does not bear fruit, which that which hinders our growth and causes us not to bear fruit. And that is always in us. It's not our circumstances. It's always in us. It's always how we react to our circumstances. So we know intellectually the splinter has to go, but as the Lord draws near us with the shears, we're like, ah! We don't want it. We do and we don't. It's a, it's, a, it's a weird thing. The kid desperately wants the splinter out of its foot, but he doesn't want it to be removed. Does that make any sense? It doesn't make any sense, but that is reality, is it not? The kid will cry and cry and cry and will, would rather hobble for days, for days, decades if necessary, and not play and be miserable than to actually undergo the process which takes three seconds of removing the splinter. How are we any different? We're not. We're not any different. We're just older, and we, we mask our fit throwing better than our children do in a spiritual